Hey everyone, this is the third part of our three-part preseason little mini-series here. And today we're going to touch on a topic about health concerns, or potentially non-concerns, we're hoping, uh, for some key Ottawa Senators this season. Now, the first is Josh Norris. There has been a lot of discussion about Josh Norris over the past couple of years. He has had more shoulder injuries than I have toes on my foot. I am not sure. <laughs> but probably. And it's it's becoming a, a sore spot for Sens fans because we know what he can do when healthy, but we have this question of, will he be healthy? We've been reassured for two off seasons straight that he's great. And this year he's apparently going to participate right off the bat. We don't have to wait until the regular season for Josh Norris to see some ice. So starting with that, Bennett, how do you feel about Josh Norris and allegedly being 100% ready to go? What do I feel? Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, in 2022, <laughs> Merriam-Webster, uh, which is one of the oldest dictionaries uh, still operating, um, they do a word of the year every year. What's their word of the year? A, a words that have seen increasing traffic or a word that has recently entered the lexicon. Uh, in 2022, uh, Merriam-Webster's word of the year was gaslighting, uh, which is when someone deliberately misleads someone uh, in order to make them think that they don't know what they're talking about or uh, to deliberately confuse someone. Uh, and that is what the Senator has been doing to us, the fans, regarding Josh Norris's shoulder since 2022 or 2021, whenever he had that really good year. Um, Josh Norris is a player, and uh, I would love to see him play for this team uh, for more than 15 games at a time. Uh, do I think I will see that? No, I don't. Um, they've already walked back what they were saying about him uh, heading into this year. We were told he was 100% issue was definitely solved and i swear that in a more recent twitter thread the team was saying that he's you know almost 100 percent or he's close to 100 percent heading into camp and last year those goal posts kept, kept getting shifted and shifted and then he missed the start of the year and then he missed the back half of the year um some guys don't play 20 years in the nhl most don't Ma many don't i think i remember seeing i don't this is a rookie move i don't have the statistic available um but i remember seeing something like the average number of nhl games that someone plays is like in the teens or something you know it's rare that guys actually have 20 year nhl careers many of them play a few dozen games a couple hundred games and maybe that's it and that's why it's such a big milestone when someone hits that thousand game mark uh, Josh Norris is not going to be one of those guys that has a long career in the NHL. I think we've seen the best of it. I think that it's going to continue to fizzle out as these chronic injuries continue to mount up and he's not able to play consistently. Um, and uh, I think that sort of exposes some holes in the center's roster. We're hoping that Pinto... He had a really strong finish to the year last year. Maybe he can step into that second line role. Maybe they could move Noise to the wing so that when he is playing, he's in a less central role. Playmaking has never really been one of his strengths. Uh, so maybe that could be a path forward for him. Maybe he's taking fewer faceoffs. It's easier on the shoulder. I know at least one of the times the injury was happened during taking a faceoff. So maybe those are some things to consider. Uh, but uh, yeah. I don't know about this one, guys. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see him being a factor on this team this year. Then it's guarding that heart again. I, uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta stay frosty, man. This is the Senators. <laughs> Matt, how are you feeling about Josh Norris's shoulder? Three point oh, four point oh. In instead of of guarding my heart, I'm going to kickstart my heart. And this guy has had his third shoulder surgery. And you know what they say? Third time's the charm, baby. Um, I mean, we hope. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you won't be fooled uh, again. Yeah, is I that know. usually what they say when it comes to shoulder surgeries, <laughs> or when yeah. it comes to like flipping coins. Um, no, I mean <laughs> the 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 third shoulder surgery is what really did it for Vladdy Tarasenko. Um, and then he followed it up with the best season of his career with 80 points. Um, with that said, uh, Tarasenko was not a center. Um, and I think we've already seen uh, a little concern from people when Travis Green initially said uh, Pin- or, uh, Norris is going to be at camp. He's re- 100% ready to go. And then Steve Seo said, uh, you know, he's tracking well and he should be ready to go for a camp. And those are two roundabout ways of saying the same thing, just with the slightest difference in wording that then gives you the pause that we have all had about Josh Norris. The difference this one, this time is, is that uh, Josh Norris is playing golf. Uh, And uh, as a golfer myself, uh, you need your shoulders to be good for that. Um, And he wasn't doing that last year. Uh, He wasn't doing much of anything uh, going into camp last year. So I think he's further, much further along in uh in his his healing process uh he's already been on the ice um and now it's just a matter of time when he's like good to go i guess uh because training camp is you know a week or two out um i think i'll be cautiously optimistic about norris because uh i really really hope that he can turn into uh, the player that he was tracking to be. Um, but obviously it's, it's a, uh, it's a marathon and not a sprint with surgeries and recovery times. Um, and if he's not quite ready to go mentally, then you just say, okay, that's fine. Like, let's not rush it because, you know, you only have two shoulders and uh, you still have a life to live. So I hope everything with new doctors, new medical staff, new athletic therapists, new this, that, and the other thing, that they do the right thing um, because it became painfully obvious uh, over the last season that the way things were happening with the Sens and their medical practices, uh, it was a bit of a joke. So I'm really hopeful that uh, things are are turning for the better. Yeah, I mean, I'm not 100% optimistic. I, I do hope that this time around things are different. Uh, the team did mention that he's going to, they envision him as playing center. I know some people were hypothesizing that if he played on the wing and you moved Pinto up the lineup, that could be a good way to compromise. Uh, but it seems like the team sees him as a, as a being a full-time center. So we'll see how it plays out. I'm, I'm sure we'll all be wincing the first few times he takes face-offs, but hopefully this time around he is good to go and hopefully his mental game is in the right place because I'm sure that he as a player is probably like, is my shoulder going to hold up? Am I going to be able to take every face off that I am anticipating I'm going to make this season? Am I able to get that one timer off on the power play that I was so good at a couple seasons ago? So I'm sure these things weigh on him as well. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how the season unfolds and man, oh man, I really hope he's at a hundred percent. That's all I'll say. The other player though, where it was revealed had a, uh, a longer term injury that I don't think was, uh, I guess, as public knowledge, was Thomas Shabbat. And apparently he has been dealing with a wrist injury for the past two years. And finally, this offseason got it fixed and it's at 100%. Uh, I'm baffled that whether it was of his own volition or the team's, 
that this wasn't fixed a season ago. This should have been something that once you wind down the season, you're not like, you know what? I, I Again, and I don't know if it was the player's choice, but as a medical staff, I feel like you're obligated to be like, listen, buddy, you might not want to do this. You might miss potentially the first month of next season. And that sucks for you. It sucks for us as a team, but like you need a guy at a hundred percent. Like, what are you going to do when you need them for a full 82 games? And, and plus, you know, what playoffs, I don't want playoffs, but <laughs> if the Sens get there, you, you need his, his wrist to work for more than 82 games. He hasn't been able to play a full season for a, what feels like forever, if ever. So that was something that shocked me, but uh, I guess I'll, I'll flip it back over to Bennett. And, you know, what did you think when you heard that? And what are you hoping for now that you know that he is good to go finally? Yeah. I think that most senators fans would tell you that for stretches of the last couple of seasons, Shabbat hasn't looked quite like the player that we're used to seeing. Uh, Perhaps part of that is, uh, an unfavorable comparison to Jake Sanderson, who stepped into the league with poise and sort of immediately became uh, one of the better two-way defenders on the team. Uh, and I think it's not like a hot take or a slight in any way to say that Sanderson is a higher ceiling than Shabbat. That's just where he was taken, his pedigree as a player and everything. Um, so I think perhaps like having the two of those guys playing in the same roster, there's a lot of sort of like chatter in the Suns verse about Shabbat perhaps not living up to the expectations Suns fans had of him, particularly in the last season or two. So to hear that he was nursing like a wrist injury is surprising that we hadn't heard it before. Like you said, like we've had a couple of season end ending, you know, press conferences over the last couple of years in which stuff like this would typically be revealed. Like at the end of this past season, Stutzel just re- came right out and said, yeah, I was dealing with like a wrist injury most of the year. Uh, so it is, as you said, a little surprising that we didn't already hear about this last year, but I'm glad to hear that it is seemingly solved. I mean, they I don't think anyone announced whether he had surgery or anything. They just said that they dealt with it and it's fixed now. Again, you know, the way that, NHL teams talk about injuries and stuff is extremely cagey and they try and give as little information out as possible. And I mean, I guess like, you know, like it is, these players are people, they don't want everyone knowing that like this, that, or the other thing is like wrong with their body. But like, I don't know, seems kind of weird to just be like, Hey, yeah, we did physio and it's good now, or we did surgery and it's good now. They're just like, we fixed it and don't ask us about what happened (laughs) which makes me think that maybe he just like went to like a witch doctor in you know like saint is adored and muck muck or wherever um who knows maybe that did happen i think he said in his interview that he did get surgery (laughs) okay Uh, yeah i think he had more than one actually word okay yeah yeah i I did not see that interview as you might (laughs) gather Uh, but uh, uh Witch doctor, I think, is also a perfectly uh, hey. a perfectly viable way to yep. deal with these things. Agreed. Agreed. Um, listen, a healthy Shabbat is a good Shabbat. Uh, we know the kind of player that this guy can be. Uh, having a one-two punch with Sanderson and Shabbat on the left-hand side is really good. Most teams would love to have that. Uh, if we can get uh, the best version of Thomas Shabbat, be it with healthy wrists, be it with a competent defensive partner on his other side, that would be great. And uh, we hope that's what we get. Yeah, I I kind of look at this as just further incompetence of the previous regime. And, you know, Bennett, you've said, uh, get rid of anybody and en- everybody and anybody. Yeah. Um, please keep my mother-in-law, Lisa. Uh, she's retiring soon. So, you know, she's going to be off the books, Bennett, I promise. No, Bennett um, wants her gone now. Dude. It's, uh, Pink it's slip. A, it's the, the principle of it, Nate. It's the principle. Yeah, well. We don't. Uh, we, do, we can't just abandon our principles when it becomes inconvenient <laughs> to us and our families. Bennett doesn't negotiate. If they, were, if they were hired by Eugene Melnick, they've got to go. Uh, fair. Anyways, all this to say that uh, there's some further incompetence of the medical staff that just uh is is inexcusable 
Um, Thomas Shabbat has played with a wrist injury for two years. Um, what? And he, <laughs> yes. uh, and like, he That's was bad, playing man. 30 <laughs> minutes a night two like, years ago. Yeah, like we were riding him. Like we were yeah. riding a guy that had one wrist. Like, uh, uh, we weren't making playoffs. So just scratch him. Like, just call it a day. Get him, get him healed up. It's very frustrating uh, hearing these stories, but it seems as though everybody got what needed to happen to them this offseason. Uh, you know, Stutzla took the recovery time he needed to get healthy. Shabbat got surgery. Um, Brady you know, watched his brother win the cup and is now going to come back furious. Yeah, I think uh, Brady's going to hit another step of pissed offness. Uh, he's going to be ready to cook right from the onset, a la Walter White. So, honestly, uh, I'm excited to hear that he's uh, 100% ready to go. I'm looking forward to seeing Norris um, and being ready to go too. Uh, I think this team has a lot of upside and, you know, some things just need to go in Ottawa's way uh, because they haven't been in the last couple of seasons. So I really hope the Sens can play up to their potential because their potential is sky high. Guys, you know, I'm just going to go out and say it. I think we full send this season. <laughs> Cup winner. <laughs> Hold on now. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's all, folks. That, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Boom. Done. <laughs> uh, thanks, everyone, for watching or listening. Really appreciate it. Uh, we're excited to get this season underway, get the Sennies out there, get some dubs. Allmark is going to score like 20 goals as a goaltender. First season, you'll ever see a goalie do it. Uh, Bennett is going to go out and bow on the ice, probably apply to be Sparty so that he can really up the vibes at the CTC. We're going all in at the Sense Central this season. Yeah, let me tell you, I will. if Linus Olmark signs an extension here in Ottawa, I will apply to be Sparty Cat. I will, I even if there is not a job posting, Dude, that's a good I will, I will like... write I will write an email. I will attach my CV. I will do a cover letter and I will at the Ottawa senators. We do know the director of communications Me and marketing. Mendez, so. this is for you, buddy. You heard it yeah. here first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. If you want to catch us on social media, uh it's it's all the same places, you know, whether it's Twitter at Sensetennial or Instagram at the Sensetennial. Find us, shoot us a message. Or just follow along for the ride. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you out there. Thank you, and go sends go. Sends go. Go sends go, baby.